Before we get started, traders, I'd like you to just take a second and hit the like button for me. That helps the uh, YouTube algorithm obviously get our channel promoted to as many people as possible, helping traders getting better, more consistent, and hopefully profitable. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Again, turn on your notifications. That will let you know I release content two, three times a week. And again, uh, helping traders on their journey as I move along on mine. So thank you for doing that. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke, Stacy Burke Trading. And today, just uh, highlighting again the power of the three day cycle. We talked about this in uh, one of the recent videos. You can scroll back and take a look. We'll review it real quickly. Talk about Monday, Tuesday, forming the initial balance typically can be the high and the low for the for the week, meaning that those are the up, the upper and lower boundaries as the week continues to trade. And that doesn't mean that those extremes hold. It means that now we have our area for a retest of a high or a consolidation and a breakout for a trend trade, depending on how the bigger structure is in terms of the week, the previous week. But that box now can potentially help us identify the best risk reward setups for a sell high, a buy low, or a trend trade. Again, you can review this from the week a uh, week ago. The video was the three day setup. But again, just talking about depending on where the week opens, if it's inside of the previous week or if we're at a previous week's highs or lows, this three day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday setup can give us a lot of information in terms of a great trade setup. Again, I talk about not trying to scalp pips and everything else. I'm looking for the the bigger structure to set up and then being able to position myself in a trade that's going to move strongly in one direction. It may be only be 25, it may be 50 pips, typically on the majors. If it's a three-day setup, we'll be looking at a minimum of a 50 pip target. Now, if it gets 35 to 40 and it's hit a major round number level or a, or a uh, higher low of a week or session, particularly uh, that may be an area where it fails, especially if it's extending into, you know, the next hour or whatnot. And how price behaves is always the most important thing about when we get there. So again, a narrow range day can precede a large explosive move. An inside bar, uh, inside bars can often trap traders on the wrong side, taking the breakout before reversing off of a high or low of the week. And coming back into range and then hitting those stops on the other time frame traders who may be trading with a stop loss on the other side of that day. Again, not getting in front of major news, but looking at the calendar and understanding how the calendar may potentially be setting up over the course of that three day cycle for a large move on the release or a capitulation type move on the release of that data. So if you're in an existing trade, that may be the catalyst that blows the move off. Or if the market is building up for an explosive move, payrolls, BOE, uh, those sorts of situations, unemployment, that may be where we get the explosive move. Now, myself, I don't trade in front of the news. Uh, again, every trader's got their own decisions to make, but I'm talking mainly about the three-day cycle. So let's take a look at this week. So taking a look at the euro, if we scroll our chart up a little tighter, we can see that Monday opened up inside of last week's range. We have our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday payrolls last Friday. So we're inside. We allow Monday, Tuesday to trade, giving us our upper and lower boundaries. And then I let the market do what it's going to do. So Tuesday on the euro was an inside bar. And then we have major round numbers. So again, uh, the market obviously found resistance at the high on Monday at double zeros, 2200. The market traded off of 50. So essentially we're inside of a 50 pip box. Tuesday was in the inside day. We get to Wednesday and we look at our 12 candle window. The market again in Asia finds support off the quarter level. London trades off of that and continues to move higher. We get the explosive vertical move, which is a designation straight away that we're potentially now in a stop hunt move. We're in the U.S. session 12 candle window. We get a one, two, three pattern to the high before we get our one bar engulfment. Now, what's important about any of these moves, if I'm looking for a short trade, the market will often give us a high bull, a high bull candle to trade back through. 
If we're looking for a long trade, the market will often give us a low bear. We'll look at an example of that on gold. But most importantly, understanding that now we have volume also below Monday's low, uh, Tuesday's low, sorry. And if we scrunch this chart back up again, we can see that the market is now working its way back down towards Tuesday's low. And we may be in a move that retests the low of the week. So the euro is an example of a fast, explosive 25 pip stop hunt. And these higher lows, the creeping trend up, and then the vertical move and the engulfment is synonymous for the fast move down. These higher lows are what will give us fuel on the way back down. And again, it's always about how price behaves. Nothing is a, a certainty. These are probability, high probability setups. And again, one bar stop. I'm selling high. I'm selling on a vertical move stop hunt. Very important to understand and remembering that we are inside of the previous week's range, the previous week's high and low. So understanding that stops are being hit on traders that are potentially either holding on to levels or these are significant levels for selling the major round numbers, the articles, the market has penetrated up into that major round levels, but it's understanding the timing. Day one, day two, day three, hit the stops, engulfment, stop hunt down, consolidation, and now we may be in a move potentially not only through to the low of the, the week, the current week, but possibly even to retest the low of the payrolls Friday. Let's take a look at the pound. Taking a look at the pound, we had a similar sort of setup. We opened up Again, we'll just zoom out. We opened up inside of the previous week's high and low. We're underneath of major round numbers on Monday. So understanding that this is not hindsight. This is a, a template I will use each and every week. If you can count to three, you can take a look at this on your own charts. Day one, Monday, we have a peak formation possibly in place from Friday's high. We've traded up into that. So again, just looking at our major round numbers, we're inside of a 100 pip box. The market is auctioning around 50 on Monday, where our peak formation is into double zeros. The market goes up in three pushes in Monday, comes back inside on Tuesday. Our high and low for the week at this stage, before even going into Wednesday, is Monday's high and low. We're inside of payrolls Friday, last Friday's peak formation, and we're also inside of a double zero box. The median price is 50. So we are looking for some sort of movement back up to the high or to the double zeros or a stop hunt or a three push pattern or down to the low for a move back up. If the market was going to give us a trend trade, we would see a breakout, a breakout pullback and a movement usually into the next session. As we saw in the euro, the vertical stop hunt was in the session itself as opposed to breaking out, pulling back, and then continuing into the next session. So for an example, Asia could uh, put a peak formation high in, the market could go down in London and break out and pull back in the gap time, and the U.S. session would continue that move down. But we're talking about day one, day two, inside bar. Day three, the market goes up, and this is a classic setup for trapping inside bar traders going long. So you'll notice that they break the previous day's high, but they don't actually go through it. And we can zoom in now and take a look. And again, noticing the timings. This is in the London window. They go up, one push, two push, they trigger the previous day's high, three pushes, then they drop down. We're going to talk more about the timings, the timings, these hours between London and the US and the significance of those. We get a stop hunt back up into the traders that are short for dropping down again, pulling back into the quarter level before failing to follow through and dropping straight down for a 50 pip move into the US session. You'll notice they triggered the longs on the inside bar and they've gone down. Other time frame traders We'll have stops down below the inside bars day before going into consolidation. So again, similar to the euro, we could be in a three push pattern into the low for a reversal. There's a BOE on Friday, BOE, a governor report coming out Friday. 
but we're in a sideways range bound market. Day one, day two, day three to the high trigger breakout traders come down, hit the stops. Understanding also what I look for, I want to be in a fast moving market. They've creeping trend, creeping trend in three pushes into the peak, dropping away into the next session, boom, straight down, fast and aggressive to hit stops. Three day setup. Taking a look at gold, if we just come back and again look at Friday, payrolls Friday, we start the week inside of Friday's high low. We'll just zoom back out again, but also inside of the previous week's high and low. Monday trades down before coming up and triggering Friday's high, putting a peak formation in Asia and then revisiting that later in the U.S. session. So we have our high of the week and we have our low of the week from Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Gold traded a little bit differently, but what gold did give us was a peak formation high in Asia that it came back and revisited. So again, I emphasize that if I am not at a previous day or week's high or low, I wait for the market to set up a high and a low. That gives me now a reference point for structure. The gold did that, and then we had our three push pattern three legs down into the Europe London window two pushes and then a one two three anchoring in our low the low bear candle down at double zeros and again if we go down to a smaller time frame which I will often do on gold the movement is a bit more volatile than the other major pairs if we zoom out take a look my low bear forms down at below double zeros and 75. Now heading into the US session on a third leg and we get a one, two, three in our gap time before the vertical stop hunt back up in the consolidation. This bear pin down into our low of the day structure, if you're not already in a long position, allowed traders again a one bar stop, positioning themselves on the break of that candle in our first hour after three pushes down for the move back to the high of the day. Now one of the tricks that I often look for on a creeper down like this is I look at the last, obviously we're looking at a 50 pip box between 50 and double zeros. I am looking for my three push squeeze consolidation in that third level of drop. Level one, level two, level three. So 75 pips if I have that low anchored in and, and again coming back to understanding the timing the timing. So after we head into our outside of the 12 candle window, I am looking for evidence of the market to put a low of the day in place with an engulfment. And again, if we go to our smaller time frame, we can see that structure is in place. We get our little uh, three bar stop hunt reversal. We get an engulfment of the low bear candle. The market retests, consolidates, and then engulfs the small little doji. Okay, there's another opportunity for traders that were looking for this exact setup and then the explosive move back up through the high. So if I'm looking for something that's going to give me a minimum back up to 50 for a 50 pip move, I want to be getting filled somewhere under double zeros or at double zeros after evidence that the market has locked in the low of the day. Now we got a peak formation in the US session that formed and again this morning we see the rollover into the previous day's low, possibly again uh, market putting in three pushes or rolling over for a retest of Monday's low. So we're in a consolidated range bound market as we saw in the other two pairs, the pound and the euro. But again this, the, the principle we're talking about today is the three day setup, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Looking at Bitcoin. Again, we started the week off inside of the previous week's high and low. We talked about this earlier this week. And the market uh, on Wednesday formed our higher double top before reversing and then rolling over into Tuesday. So coming back to our basic pattern of just Monday, Tuesday, forming our high low. We've triggered other time frame traders. The market blew off in three, three pushes, one push, two push, and then a peak formation, three push, reversal in the US session and then aggressively pulling back into the close before layering on top of that lower high again on top of double zeros 
So for traders that have asked me about the numbers on Bitcoin, all I've done with my uh, numbers is just added extra zeros onto my quarter levels and my main levels. Same thing, just add some zeros. Then the market gets traders selling down into the Asia Open on Wednesday, pulling back and then fall, uh, trading it again with the follow through before fast and aggressive reversal, the one, two, three. What that does, if you just coming back to understanding everybody in these consolidations is now trapped. Everybody who is shorting this market, every time the market consolidates, and there's a consolidation, the market clears that consolidation. These traders are now trapped shorting the market. So there's plenty of people with the media. They're all shorting Bitcoin because it was going to maybe go down. And it still may go down. But in our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday setup, this reversal is an all-in reversal setup. We get our peak formation low. Do not counter trend the peak formation. They get traders counter trending in uh, uh, along with the existing trend before pulling back. The follow through fails. Heading into the Europe London 12 candle window, we are now in a market that it is in an all in structure type of day. You do not want to counter trend these days. These are the days that if you counter trend them and you don't take the loss, they'll blow your account out because they do not come back. It continues to move strongly and aggressively back towards the high of the week from Monday, Tuesday. Now we may be back forming a high on top of Monday's high and the market may roll over, but at this current time, the market has reversed, put a peak formation low in, and this may be the, the reversal for a uh, move back up into that downward falling market. But again, the Monday, Tuesday, the three day setup, a great example of a Monday, Tuesday down low. Monday forms the high, peak formation high. Tuesday forms the peak formation low. The fall, failed follow through trapping traders down low before the W reversal and a strong reversal all-in type of day. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.